Hello everybody and welcome back to the Moshix Mainframe channel. This is Moshix. And as you know, over the last year, almost exactly a year, maybe a little bit more than a year even, I've been having a lot of fun with uh, ZVM. I've been discovering this new operating system of which I knew very little about up until about a year ago. Of course, I've been playing with VM370, but uh, if, if, you, if you take MBS 3.8 and then go to all the way to ZOS, you will still recognize almost everything. You'll feel it instantly at home. I think with VM370 and, the, and all the way developed to ZV, ZVM, you, some things have changed substantially. And, uh, and so I've been, I've been really been playing with it a lot and I've been uh, learning to love it. Uh, the other thing is that I have been doing virtualization technology, I've been innovating technology over the last uh, 20 years or so as one of the uh, founders of the Zen company and uh, of the KVM company. Um, so I, I've been doing virtualization for a long time and so I, I, that's why I was of course naturally drawn to ZVM. And, um, and in particular, I think one of the things about ZVM that I really like is uh, it's text-based. <laughs> and uh, you can do everything that you would expect from a modern uh, a virtualization uh, solution such as VMware or KVM, but it's all text-based and it's all in the mainframe. And, uh, and so I've been practicing uh, all the different aspects of it and been learning a lot. And today we're going to look at one particular aspect, which is network virtualization inside ZVM. ZVM has the notion of uh, of virtual switches, that's a LAN switch, an Ethernet LAN switch, that's emulated in software inside ZVM. And that's what we're going to look at right now. Virtual switches are important in ZVM because it allows you to use just one Ethernet hardware, Ethernet uh, card or port and then make that available to all the guest operating systems on top of ZVM. Uh, there is a great presentation by one of the main architects of uh, ZVM along with Bill, well, with other people. And by the way, one of the great things about ZVM is that it's a much smaller community. You get to know everybody, the developers, the main uh, technology uh, visionaries, as well as the people who've been associated with it for a long, long time. Everybody knows everybody. It's a much smaller, much cosier community. So Alt uh, Alan Altmark, um, an IBMer, has been there for a long time. Uh, he's the one who's um, probably been most vocal about virtual switches. And that's how he explains in his presentation virtual switches. So that, you know, all this device, you probably all have one of those in the office. Um, you can manage those ports. <coughs> Excuse me. You can um, sometimes you can prioritize certain switches. You can turn them on and off, etc. And uh, you can uh, create virtual LANs and all that kind of stuff. And so basically, what we're going to do is recreate this whole device here inside ZVM, but it's a software device, so that then um, the guest operating systems can connect to some of those ports and get through that connectivity to the LAN the network and of course ultimately the internet outside uh, the ZVM uh, hypervisor. Uh, there's also of course a router so you can route things between networks um, and, uh, and then you can create VLANs of course virtual VLANs or virtual virtual LANs and many other things that you can do. But what we're going to do today is just create a very simple setup of a virtual switch and then let guest operating systems connect through the virtual switch and get out of the ZVM uh, machine out of the mainframe into the network. Um, so we're going to see how this all uh, works. Of course, there's three components to it uh, before we get to that. Uh, one is you define a virtual switch. And you can do it either from the command line or you can do it in the system configuration file, which is kind of the, the most important configuration file in ZVM. And so it gets set up at IPL time, or you can do it, as I said, from the command line. Then you make that virtual switch visible to the guest operating systems. And I'm gonna show how to do that. And then you give virtual um, machines uh, you grant them access to those switches and those three steps will enable the guest operating system to to see the virtual switch and connect through it to the hardware uh, Ethernet card what's called an OSA card on the mainframe and out and out to the to the uh, world out world outside the uh, the mainframe okay so in a way 
Um, well, maybe if we have a graphic that shows a little bit better. But this is just all the commands. But I think you understand what we're talking about, right? You have the mainframe on top of the mainframe, you have ZVM. On top of the mainframe uh, the, of uh, ZVM, you have several guest operating systems such as ZOS, uh, Linux, etc., and other ZVM systems. And all those want to have access to the LAN outside the mainframe, but you don't want to dedicate an Ethernet card to each operating system. That, that's just not flexible enough. Uh, that's Alan Altmark, uh, the person I was talking about in Endicott, obviously, which is the home of ZVM. All right, so let's get to it. Um, I have me here connected to my mainframe. Um, and if I do query, query vSwitch, we see that we have one vSwitch um, configured. It's called VSW1, Virtual Switch 1. And right now, um, there is two machines connected to it. And you can see kind of all the um, all the configuration parameters of this virtual switch, you can, all those can be modified. You can give it a MAC address. Um, you can do several things with it. So you can you can um, you can of course create level two virtual switches as well as level three. That's very important. A lot of companies nowadays are moved over to level two uh, networking instead of level three. Um, it's a little bit more cumbersome to manage and less visible, but it gives a lot of advantages. Anyway, so this is, you can see that, uh, that there is a virtual switch defined here. And if I look at all the machines running on this mainframe, I have here a ZOS uh, 2.3 uh, called MSH for Moshix that's running. And that uh, ZOS image has full access to the network outside the mainframe. And um, so let's see how to get the, the system config file, which is the main configuration file of uh, ZVM, which is read upon IPL, how we can make that uh, create the virtual switch. So um, let's access. Uh, the mini disk where the system config file is is maintained oops and here it is so this is the system config file and you will see that we have here the defined virtual switch with the name virtual switch one bsw1 uplink and that's the device of the OSA card or the Ethernet card to the mainframe. And um, we give it the port name port B. That I use that because that's the example in the manuals. And then, uh, of course, first we need to give access to the TCP IP virtual machine itself because, um, because even ZVM itself will then access uh, uh, the, the LAN through the virtual switch. And so that needs to have access to it. And then we we'll give um, access to all the virtual machines that need to be accessing the virtual switch. So by by giving uh, system config this uh, options here, define virtual switch and then modify virtual switch. We can also just put it here. Makes it more readable. Okay, so we gave now access to all the virtual machines that need access to the virtual switch. And now we get out of it. And of course, any time you make any slightest modification to system config, always check um, the system config for any syntax error. So uh, in ZVM, you access uh, minidisk 193 as E, and then you say CP syntax system config F, just to be extra sure. Yeah, no errors encountered. Do this every single time you make modifications system config because if you have any errors there, the machine may not be able to IPL anymore. And then you're stuck and then you need to mount that device on a different LPAR and uh, go edit. So it's just it just takes seconds to check. And so always remember to do that. So now uh, that we've done that, we can now see what other, uh, the second step. So first we define uh, the virtual switch. The third step is to give access, granting access to the virtual machine, which is all done in the system config, right? We could also do, to grant access, you could also set uh, virtual switch 
um, brand and then username, right? But uh, by doing the modify command that you just saw, we already define it and give access to the virtual machines that need it. The second step that we need to do, so the first and the third step are done, uh, steps are now done. The second step that I mentioned is the um, making the virtual machines definition see the, the virtual switch. So I have here an example of the Moshix uh, of the direct file of the directory file. Now a lot of people, of course, nowadays would do this with Dermaint. I really don't like Dermaint that much. I do it still all by hand uh, because I don't define that many users. You want to use Dermaint when you have many uses, so you don't have gaps um, in the mini disks configurations, or you don't have them overlapping. It just eliminates a lot of the human errors. Uh, but I don't define many uses. I only use ZVM primarily to start virtual machines. So. I, I work with the direct file directly. Uh, so here's the here we have a virtual machine defined uh, ZOS 23 Moshix uh, with this password here ZOS 23. Here's the um, eight gigabytes of memory, which is of course on the low side. This is the prior, the permissions. I give it um, two CPUs and of course then the console um, that has that's controlling this uh, ZOS instance and then the uh, printer and the reader and here is the key directive here NICDEF, a network interface card definition 404 type QDIO which is Ethernet, LAN system and the name of the of the virtual switch which is called VSW1 and since we gave permission right we you saw the modify command uh, we gave um, we, we modified to grant access to ZOS 23 MSH to the virtual switch now we've closed the loop and they can all connect right so and then of course this is just the special or just the 3270 devices and here are all the uh, DASDs that ZOS needs at the minimum to IPL correctly so this is this is the directory file and here's the special um, directive NICTEF 0404 type QDIO LAN system and the name of the virtual switch and as you just saw um, here is the again the modified so first define the switch number two in the directory file give the nickdef command and number three then modify virtual switch to give access to the virtual machine that needs it including always tcp ip itself which is also virtual machine so once you have that done now you really, what you really done is you created a virtual switch in memory in, in, in inside the virtual machine inside ZVM, and now you connected the, the the Ethernet cables basically between the switch and the virtual machines and the TCP/IP controller. So that's what we've done. Now what we still need to find out is how to configure ZOS to be able to connect uh, correctly to this uh, to this virtual switch. But this is the I want to say almost the easiest part because um, it's it's actually very simple to do. Um, so we can leave this here, and now maybe we just make this bigger and start to work on the ZOS image to see what happened there. All right? So maybe we just okay. So let's dive into Z twenty three MSH and then. Now, let's go check how you define the access to the virtual switch from inside the guest machine. So this is the TCP parameter file for ZOS that we're using. Uh, I think it's this one. Okay, so you all know this uh, TCP IP definition member or file and now all the magic happens here, right? So this is all standard. Up to here, that's all standard. So we could actually do... Okay, so we only look at this part. And so now we we configure a device called port B and it's link, either we call the uh, link Ethernet 1, EDH1, connected to this device. 
and then just a normal so I gave this IP 192.168.1.13 for this link and and we connected to this port which is the virtual switch port if you remember <coughs> excuse me and then um, with some versions of TCP uh, of ZOS you may actually want to uh, remove this configuration parameter TLS because then you're going to you will need an uh, a Parm lib entry for the for the uh, encrypted communication, but you can do it with or without. Up to you. Uh, I I do it with in ZOS 2.3 for all the versions. I remove this parameter uh, because the standard configurations are not meant to use uh, the encrypted version. So that's all I use. Um, then also there's one more thing that you need to usually you don't need to change that if you use ADCD like I do but um, if you don't have ADCD you may have to change this uh, where you uh, connect the OSA and here you need the read um, address you know any OSA has three devices right the read the write and the data path so 400 in my case 401 402 and uh, MCP level QDIO and you need to have that there and once you have that we already just created together with the TCP parameters that we looked at before here you really created uh, the connection now is complete and you can go um, here and you can say and you can see um, TCP IP is working I could tell that to myself um, let's go out um, well we need to yeah so that works and we're now just logged into ourselves again <laughs> so uh, and I will of course say that this user is already connected I would think yeah so uh, but that works and um, uh, We can just start a new one and uh, so that's how we make it uh, work so we have full network uh, co uh, connection now and uh, we could do this for every additional for every additional um, virtual machine oh, we already logged in So that's it in a nutshell. Um, if you have access to the, we don't have access to the, well, we could link to the virtual machine with the TCP IP tools like, such as ping, but uh, there's no need to do it here. This works perfectly, as you can see. And uh, <coughs> if you read the manuals, it sounds so complicated. Uh, the manuals for virtual switch actually make it sound much more complicated than it really is. Uh, of course, there's some differences if you do level two versus level three. And as I said, virtual switch and ZVM can do both. But uh, if you stick to the simple use case, it's actually just three commands on ZVM and a uh, very small configuration on ZOS. And you can halt the video and look at the configuration on ZOS to see how I did it and adapt it to your own particular use case. So this is it. Uh, very simple, nice and sweet. It works beautifully. It's very fast. Uh, I get good performance out of it, and uh, and I recommend you all to uh, use uh, use um, the virtual switch if uh, if you haven't used it yet. It's been around, I think, since at least ZVM 5.3. Before Z virtual switch, there was something else called uh, LANs. So you could actually create a LAN inside ZVM, uh, and that I think is still around that feature. And I played with it a little bit, but I think the virtual switch is such a, an elegant solution. That's what I would advise all of you to use. If you have any questions on how to set it up, you can always uh, text me or, I mean, uh, write a comment below this video or send me a direct email. If you have any problems setting up your machine, um, I'll be glad to help you uh, get it up and running. And uh, I think in one of the future videos, we'll actually use a Linux uh, guest on top of ZVM and you connect uh, Linux to the um, to the virtual switch. I also want to thank a couple of people who have helped me with this. Uh, one would be 
Neil Ferguson, who was recently featured on uh, on the Mainframe podcast by uh, uh, two very, very nice people, Jeff Bisty, and another one is uh, uh, Mr. Giglio, who is, uh, I think, an IBM Distinguished Engineer, I think, or a fellow. And, uh, and uh, they featured both Neil Ferguson, who was very involved at, uh, at his company in getting Linux to run properly on CVM. And I was too, about 20 years ago. I was involved with the, some of the BIN tools. And, uh, and then another one that was featured a couple of months ago is Bill Bittner, who was also one of the very well-known uh, ZVM people. And uh, so uh, Neil helped me with this. Um, I had the question how to see who is logged in to, to ZVM through which uh, access method. And he helped me with that. And so I wrote a little script. So I can, whenever I, I want to see who's logged into my machine, I can do exec who, and then it will tell me uh, which TCP connection is connected to which virtual machine. Because if you do QN, you only see which terminals are at attached or disconnected. But it will not show you the TCP, which TCP IP connections and IP address went to which virtual machine. And so um, I wrote a little script here, uh, which says set observer TCP IP. So we become observer of all the TCP IP virtual machine traffic and then we query TCP IP for uh, logical devices 1 to 100. I never have more than two or three users anyway. And then I also query the names just to have a complete picture and uh, the full picture of the users. And so I wrote this all in a little script. And when I do exit who, I get now exactly, I know exactly who is dialed to which machine. And um, and that's it. Um, here, one interesting thing happens sometimes that this command takes a little while to execute, and so this one comes in before the other one. That's funny, um, because they're asynchronous, obviously. So um, thank you, Neil. Thank you, all the others. Uh, thank you, the particular gentleman in Japan. And uh, if you have any questions, any comments, uh, then I would like to hear them. And uh, if you want me to help you with your particular setup, I'll be happy to do it. There's so much more. Uh, that can be done with this very interesting technology. So thank you for watching and uh, please subscribe to the Moshex Mainframe channel if you haven't subscribed yet and see you soon again. Thank you. Goodbye.